My name is Mike Nelson. My job, underwater research. I've had many tough underwater assignments. I've been hired to photograph sharks for scientific institutions. I've been retained by marine land to study the behavior of whales at close range. I've explored the treacherous hulks of sunken ships for insurance companies. But the most dangerous job I ever encountered arose on a job when I was hired as a consultant by the Costigan Light Metals Company. When I was told to report to the office of the president for briefing, I knew that my job was important. In his office, the first thing I saw was a strange rock. It glittered like a giant emerald. You're looking at the ore of beryllium, Mr. Nelson. Beryllium? Yeah. That's one of the light metals, isn't it? A vital defense material. Not the United States has no stockpile. In case of war, we'd be in trouble. But now, there is a stockpile waiting for us. Right here. Over 50,000 tons of high-grade crystals like that one. We've bought up the rights to mine it, but there's one tough problem. The vein is at the bottom of an underwater canyon. Strong surges of current flow right through it. Sides are covered with coral reefs and ledges. Our dredging equipment would get hopelessly snarled. Yeah, I can see that it would. Now, what I want you to tell me is this. Could a team of divers mine that ore? Well, that depends on quite a few things. Uh, how deep is the bottom of that canyon? 170 feet. Oh, that wouldn't be easy. The surge would rule out helmet divers. But uh, skin divers equipped with aqua lungs might be able to handle it. Well, can they work at 170 feet? Only for a few minutes. But uh, with extra air tanks, that could be stretched to, well, say, an hour per dive. How many such dives can a man make per day? Over a sustained period? Two. No, in that case, we'd need about 20 divers. You'd be lucky if you get five. Five? Oh, there must be dozens of frog men who'd sign up for this job. Men who've been trained to handle the toughest situations in the water. Down to 110 to 20 feet. Below that, they run into something that uh, training can't prevent. Rapture of the deep. What's that? Well, it's kind of a, a groggy feeling. It's caused by uh, compressed nitrogen in the body. The technical name for it is nitrogen narcosis. You, uh, you don't know where you are, and you start uh, seeing things. Some men actually become violent. Well, does that affect all divers? More or less. Some divers can feel it coming on, and they swim up to uh, shallow water until it goes away. Others can't recognize the early symptoms. They're the ones that you won't be able to use. Well, will you help us find divers that we can use? I said I'd be glad to try. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. How are you going to bring heavy rocks up from 170 feet? Well, first we'll blast them loose from the volcanic lava. Then we'll go back down again and uh, gather them up in steel mesh nets. The ship will haul them to the surface. Charlie, you can't make this kind of dough doing these kind of stunts and pictures. The money I make in pictures, I live to spend. Sorry, Mike. Too risky for me. See you, Mike. I'd be closing up shop, wouldn't it? That's right. But think of the dough you'd be making. How long before I'd have to leave for Madagascar? Ten days from now. Of course, uh, you're going to have to pass some tests first. We couldn't fly halfway around the world and then find out that you couldn't handle the job. Well, if I can't handle the job, buddy boy, nobody can. Hand it over. About how long would I be away? Uh, about a year. May I ask a question? Is it dangerous? Louise, your husband was one of the best frogmen in our outfit. If he passes these tests that I'm going to put him through, you haven't got a thing to worry about. I'm sorry, Doug. I don't want you to go. But Louise... 
Three hundred a week plus expenses. We can't afford to pass up a deal like this. You're over 30, my darling husband. And besides, you've got Carol and me to think about now. Okay. I guess I know when I'm licked. If you ask me, pal, you're a pretty lucky guy. Goodbye, Louise. I'll see you, Doug. Uh, hold it, Mike. Look, who are we kidding? Business has been rotten, the baby's been sick. We got a stack of bills bigger than the house. Count me in. Doug! Count me in. Look, why don't you think about this for a while, huh? Give me a ring. You heard what I said. Have I have jaundice, kidney trouble, heart trouble, diseases of the joints? No. Shortness of breath? No. Pleurisy, pneumonia, asthma? No. Respiratory infections? No. Any major surgery in the last five years? No. Okay, Doug, you're next. Yeah. Strip to the waist, huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, Mike, uh, is this a very tough exam? Same type you pass in the Navy. Good. Sorry I'm late, Mike. Got delayed at the shop. That's ah, okay, Paul. Doug. Hi, Paul. Oh, hi. You, um, trying out for this Madagascar deal? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I thought you said it was rough. It is. You think you can be counted on? In emergencies, I mean? Don't worry about me. Uh, what is this? Uh, none of my business. Oh, wait a minute now. Uh, if this is something I should know, let me hear it. Well, it happened last summer. He was my buddy on a deep dive. We followed a barracuda into some seaweed, got tangled up. And? And he got free. I signaled for help and he got scared. He went right up. You let him stay there? Of course not. I felt nitrogen narcosis hitting me, so I signaled him to go up with me. He refused. Re refused? I was tangled in the seaweed, buddy. Oh, seaweed. There wasn't any seaweed. Hey, what is this? I thought you guys were, were pals. You sweated out the water together? You opened up a diving club? What gives? It's very simple. He just can't admit he's lost his nerve, that's all. Look, let's get something straight. You're the one who's lost. When you lost Louise. Louise? Don't deny it. Ever since the day we announced our engagement, you've had it in for me. Now you're trying to knife me in the back. I'm trying to keep you from killing yourself. You're afraid. The first dive you make below 50 feet, you'll panic. Mr. Trimble. We'll see about that when I make my test. Yeah, we will. Doug? Yeah? Now, I don't know which one of you is telling the truth. But this is going to be a very rough job. Each diver is going to have to depend on the other guy for his life. I don't want any personal grudges. Is that clear? Sure. Yeah. This was a problem that I hadn't bargained for. Two divers that I was counting on the most at each other's throat. When every candidate was essential to this nationally important project. The assignment was a great challenge. If I could train skin divers to become underwater miners, the great resources of underwater mineral deposits would be available, increasing our national wealth. We devoted several days testing individual divers. Each man had to qualify in the use of underwater explosives so they could blast the beryllium oil loose from the bottom of the sea in Madagascar. After the fuses were lit, we returned to our base of operation, a diving barge, anchored one mile offshore and equipped with a hoist, emergency devices and a cabin with a decompression chamber in case anyone might suffer from the rapture of the deep. This was the last day of the tests. Mr. Costigan was aboard and he had very good reason to be concerned. So many men had failed to qualify that the Madagascar crew was still short two divers and only a few candidates left. Paul Barton and Doug Trimble were members of this last group. Five seconds to go. Now. Right on the button. All right, men. We're right over the spot now. The next phase of this test will be a dive to the bottom. You'll all go down the path. 
Each man will have one of these nets uh, lowered to him. Johnny, would you bring it in, please? One of these. It'll be your job to fill it with as many rocks as you possibly can. Uh, any questions? Any particular size rock? The bigger the better. Those explosions must have broken plenty of them loose. How much time are we going to have? Four minutes. Oh, and let me caution you. Don't work too fast. I don't want anyone collapsing on me down there. Well, if you feel the uh, rapture coming on, signal me and go on up. Well, is it all clear? Right. Okay. Let's get wet, huh? Johnny, lower the net. Getting nervous, buddy boy? Not a bit. <laughs> began working at a good steady pace without hurry. The water gave the rocks a certain amount of buoyancy and I felt pretty hopeful that both of them may qualify. But working at a great depth, breathing compressed air for a prolonged time plays tricks in the mind. And one of the divers suddenly forgot one of the safety rules of diving. Look first before you reach into dark holes or you may tangle with the vicious teeth of a moray eel. When molested, these babies attack ferociously with powerful jaws and sharp teeth which slant inwards. Suddenly the eel struck, fastening its teeth in his hand like fish hooks. Killing the eel proved to be a tough job, but prying those jaws loose was even tougher. so I quickly improvised the tourniquet. This man had forgotten an important safety regulation. It was obvious that he was affected by rapture of the deep. He didn't meet our safety standards and we were still short of at least one diver. Costigan's crew, but at least one more was needed to make the project practical. The tests of Doug Trimble and Paul Barton would be vitally important. But first, we had to take care of the injured man. Get the first aid kit. How you feel? I think I went through a bud saw. He was lucky. What do you mean? His buddy stuck by him. Why don't you knock it off? You got a rope around him. Watch out below that. Not to wait back out. Mike could understand. Listen, I told you to knock it off. I didn't chicken out on you last summer. I haven't lost my nerve. I'm still just as good a diver as I ever was, so get off my back. I don't understand why you're trying to turn yourself into a job you know you can't handle. I don't understand why you're trying to knife your own buddy in the back, no matter how jealous you are. Jealous? Yeah, jealous. Here, stop it! Cut it out! Cut it out! Hear me? Cut it out! Cut it out! I 
suppose I ought to be grateful about you. You saved me from making a costly mistake. Putting on the crew. You're both out. Hey, hold it, Mike. Why not take one of them? I need every man I can get. Okay. One of you goes. Which one? We'll soon find out. Put on your scuba. be graded not only on the number of rocks you can gather, but on diving technique, response to orders, and reaction to emergencies. All right, let's go. suddenness at this depth without any signs of forewarning. I gave him immediate instructions on my slate. because of these tests. I was grading Doug, observing him closely, when Paul suddenly did the unexpected. Instead of a rock, he picked up a guitar fish and began doing an Apache dance. Then he seemed to think that it was a golf club and imagine himself on the fairway. He was as giddy as a schoolgirl. This wasn't funny. of the deep. I ordered him to go up to the shallower water where I knew the condition would automatically clear up. But instead of obeying, he nearly bashed my head in. Then he surprised Doug. This was rapture of the deep at its unpredictable worst. One minute he was like a kid playing games. The next he was a crazed madman bent on killing every living creature within reach.
The two figures struggling desperately nearby seemed completely unreal. I kept waiting for them to disappear. But those fighting shapes persisted. And when they finally became shockingly real to me, I grabbed Paul. But he seemed to have the strength of a madman. It took a Jew to hold to finally subdue him. I pushed him into the rock net and had him hauled up. This created a new danger. In his condition, he might neglect to expel the compressed air which was expanding rapidly in his lungs as he was hauled up toward the surface. But the decompression chamber we had on our barge was for just such an emergency. It would prevent Paul's lungs from rupturing, which would almost certainly kill him. Get him into the decompression chamber. By applying air pressure inside the chamber, we took him back to the same conditions of 170 feet below and kept him there for six hours. How do you feel, Paul? Okay. Here's the last stop. After reducing the pressure in slow stages, it was safe to open the lock of the chamber. Is there a blanket over there, Mr. Costigan? There we go. Uh, how do you feel? Yeah, better. Yeah, that's right. What did I do down there? Try to kill us both. Did I? Yes, you did. There was no giant squid? No. Last summer, no seaweed. Mm. Uh, I guess that lets me out. I'm afraid it does, Paul. I'm... I'm sorry for the way I acted. Forget it. We both know how 170 feet of seawater can knock a guy off base. Is that right, Doug? That's right. Well, that's another one we'll have to cross off the list. And that wraps up the test. Eight qualified. They can all make the grade, huh? Guaranteed. What about Rapture of the Deep? They can handle it. You can start mining that ore as soon as you can get them to Madagascar. Good. My job was done. Soon metal taken from the ocean floor and fabricated into planes and rockets would go shooting through the air. Maybe even into space. And underwater mining would become a fact. Hi, I'm Lloyd Bridges, inviting you to join us for another action-packed story of underwater adventure one week from today.